Something has, circumstances have changed, the situations have changed. Thank you, God. And the Spirit of God is upon your case. Thank you, Listen God. Listen to me, He's on the case. Thank you, He's Lord. heard your cry. Yes, God. And he shall indeed send an answer. Thank you for the answer. In Mark chapter 10, Bartimaeus started praising God for the answer. The Bible said that he, that, that he had been blind for a number of years. He was on the roadside and and Jesus came by and he asked the Lord to have mercy on him. Always say, have mercy. Try have, have mercy. Have mercy. Not judgment. Have mercy. And he's asked the Lord to have mercy upon him. And when he asked him to have mercy upon him, the Bible said that Jesus stopped and asked him what did he want. And he told him what he wanted. And he got what he wanted. And there were people who tried to talk him out of what he'd already got. Don't let anybody talk you out of what God's already done for you. Bless his name anyway. Don't let anybody talk you out of what God has already promised and God has already said. Because if God is still in motion, it's going to come to pass. Yes, Lord. It's going to happen, thank and you, you can Lord. speed it up. I want to thank all of you fasters. Where are the fasters at? If you fasted one day, you fasted all day, 21 days later, stand up, let's bless God. 21 Hallelujah. days later. Hallelujah. The day thank you. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, the Bible promises a couple of things with the fasting, and so I want to mention them for just a moment. Because it promises some things that, that are supposed to happen if you fasted. And, and Daniel, of course, fasted after. He's the one that said the 23 days or the 7 days or the 3 weeks. And he said the thing. And God sent an angel to start talking to him. Now, how many are you ready for angelic visitation? Yes. For real, you know. Yes. But he stands up and then says, I heard you from the first time you prayed 3 years ago. I heard you when you were praying 10 years ago. And I'm standing in the presence of an almighty God. Talk yes, to you and yes. tell me. The Bible tells us, and now I'll get to that, that, that God says that we can stand in his counsel and we can yes, ask yes. him. In fact, he says, don't do anything. He warns prophets. Don't be prophesying. He said, you didn't stand in my counsel. What you got to say? Yes, he said, you didn't yes, hear what yes. I wanted said. You didn't mm -hmm. hear. So we, wanna, we, wanna, we want God to take us in that place. Yes. So when you have angelic visitation, it's not going to be the devil. When you have angelic right. visitation, it's not going to be the devil. It's not right. going to be the devil. It's, it's not going to be the devil. Because God, when you begin to fast, you begin to pray, God begins to send an answer. And because he takes a long time, doesn't mean it take, it doesn't, it, it, he does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. Yes. And sometimes he's testing our patience to see if we'll stay on course regardless. <laughs> I want to see if you're going to hang out through or you're just after me for my fish and bread, Jesus said. You just want the f fish fry. You want the fish fry and you want the bread. But you ain't serve, what y'all serving today? Oh, y'all ain't saying, well, I can't come. I can't be there. I can't do that. And sometimes we have to be very careful. Daniel, 21 days, 21 days later, the angel showed up to him. That is an amazing guy. He goes to the lion did thing. He goes to all these things. He's an amazing guy. So his, his idea for fasting and praying was to get closer to God, to have a spiritual word. Anybody got closer to God on your 21 day? Boy, I sure have. Yesterday I was, uh, I was uh, uh, yes, uh, this weekend we had our school for prophetic people. We had an amazing time. They did an yeah. amazing yeah. job. Yeah. Then the next day I, I had the opportunity to go in and, and talk to some pastors about the minister, uh, minister of the prophet. And so I had time to do that. And so I came over to the church to run me, some, run me off some copies. I was going to run down to the street to see the garden. If you haven't seen it, you got to go see what God's doing up the street there. He's planting things, growing things. And I certainly want your support in it if you haven't yet made that time. But anyway, I'm going in. I'm running off copies. I'm rushing. I'm rushing. I come out to my car. My car won't start. Dead, dead, dead. So I sit there and I said, all right. First, I, and I start laughing. I just start laughing. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, now this don't even make no sense. And so then I opened up the hood, you know, as if I knew what to do. <laughs> you know, people always open up the hood, you know. They don't know what to do with it. Just go open the hood up. So I opened up the hood and I and I bought a brand new battery and I, and I touched the car and I said, you know what? Here's what I said. I said, Lord, now if I be a man, if I start this car. <laughs> I went back to the car. Praise <laughs> God. God. Just like that. So don't get stuck in a little moment. If you're a woman of God, if you're a man of God, pull your car. My God, my God. Pull your kingdom card. It's not a race card, it's a kingdom card. Pull your kingdom card. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I'm a member with privileges. Mm -hmm. 
and it started right up and I, and I, I laughed the other way because I realized, and I knew what it was because of course I was dealing with people who, pastors who didn't really deal with prophetic but they want to know about it. And so, and, and I'd been up all working on it so I could see how I could address them. And of course, God, God did a wonderful thing with that. We have to know when God is breaking our case. When you feel the pressure start to lift, there's a break in the case. God. When you start to get happy for no reason, there's a break in your case. Ooh, my God, when you my wake God. up now, I'm feeling so much better. I don't know why. I know why there's a break in the case. Heaven oh. is moving on Thank your you, behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you just ought to celebrate the Hallelujah. verdict that God is doing on your behalf. You need to understand that so that you won't be discouraged. Some of us got so many cases before heaven, we think God can't handle them. He can handle them all. He will. By the way, Taylor graduates from high school today, so we'll be out of here in time to go to his graduation. Praise so God. He graduated from high school. And that's Amen. a major thing. I was telling Regina the tremendous job that she's done to get both yeah. her sons yeah. through college. Amen. I mean, through high school and then into college. God yeah. amazing. God. Yeah. Praise God. If you're faithful, Thank you, Lord. Things will happen. If you're faithful to God. Now, the break of the case depends on what it is that you have earnestly put before God. I assure you, it's going, it's breaking. And so you'll get, you'll get some, some uh, news that you haven't heard before. You'll, you'll see some things you haven't seen. And you just feel better. I just feel better. Yes. I'm just elated by God. On next Sunday, we're going to license Karen. Bouquet and Natasha. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And so what I want to ask you to do is that if you have any art against them that says they shouldn't get that, then let Grace or myself know. Let who know? Grace or yourself. Let who know? Grace and Grace or myself know. Let everybody else know. Let Grace and myself know. And uh, let us know what there's a reason. Now, if you have any reason why you think they should get licensed, then email us and tell us. <laughs> let who know? Amen. Email Grace, Grace, and and Grace and myself. Let Grace and myself know. Mm -hmm. No one else. So that we can address it accordingly. Amen. In Amen. Isaiah 58, 6 through 12, here's what the Bible says. Oh, I forgot about my slides. You know, I'm down the road here. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, verse 6 and 12, it's not just the kind of fast I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice. Anybody has some injustices? There's going to be a break in your case. Stand to your feet and say, Lord, I think there's a break in my case. Lord, I thank you. There's a break in my case. I think I received the break in my case. Lord, I received the break in my case. He's going to untie the cords. Of the yoke to set the oppressed. Have you ever been oppressed, stressed, and in a mess? There's a break in your case today. Thank you, God. Thank you. There's a break in your case. Tell God, I thank you for it. It's not thank to share you your, your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. In other words, God's going to give you an extra amount of resources. Resources. Thank God for resources. Thank God, you, Father. God, thank God, you, God. God. Thank God for saying, Lord, I receive resources. resources. Lord, I receive God, resources. But for everybody that the Lord you're sitting across my path, people are coming your direction with what yeah, you have. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a breakthrough there. There's a breakthrough there. Thank you, Lord. You'll be able to clothe people. You'll be able to turn, turn them away from their own flesh and blood. There'll be a change. There is a break in your case. Thank you, God. Then, you will, then your life will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Somebody waiting on your healing, there's a breakthrough for your healing. Declare and claim, Lord. He says, then your verse 18, then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. Thank God for his righteousness going before you. That's my right standing. Thank you, Jesus. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear God. Listen, I say, God's got my back. God's got, God's my, got back. my back. God's, God's got my back. back. God's got Thank my you, back. God. I can go bold. Yes. Where nobody else wants to go. I can go bold. 
Because God's got my rear guard. He's got my back. God's got my back. He's got my back. There was a time when Israel had went to battle and they won a battle and they had a tremendous battle and they won a, a horrendous amount of spoils. And when they got back, some of them said, we don't want to share this because they didn't go to war with us. And God said, don't do it like that. Share. Some of y'all right now have won battles for other people. They could not fight the fight. They could not walk that walk. They could not stand. And so you have won battles for them. It's not just about you. To serve means I do whatever I need to do to help you become whatever you need to become. That's what serving and servants are. And so many of you have fought battles and, and stayed, and even on this fast, you have got a breakthrough for not just yourself, other people. So you can tell them, I fasted for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I fasted before God on your behalf. Because I wanted your behavior to change. I wanted you to have a breakthrough. I wanted your life to be better. And so I went to the one who can change. I went to God on your behalf. Fasting is not error just about us. Fasting is putting ourselves in a position so that God can do things for others. And when you fast, you become a bridge. Because now God has a way to cross over to do for others who cannot do for themselves. Amen. Amen. So Amen. When I get the opportunity to fast and pray, I always have a list in my heart, a list of things that I want to have. I was talking to God earlier this morning. That's when he said, he said, remember, now don't forget, there's a break in the there's you got a break in your case. And so for me, that means a whole lot of different things. I don't know, for me, that means a, a number of different things. And so I want to thank God for that. I want you to know, read with me in the year that what? King Messiah. I did what? He did what? He said, the year Uzziah died, I saw God sitting up on the throne. Sitting up on the throne. We need to understand that the word of God is active, it's powerful. Look at somebody say it's powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. It never loses its power. It never, Thank you, it never, God. never, never. It generates itself. It's powerful. So, Thank you, too. So he says in verse 9, back in Isaiah 58, then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will call, he will answer. He's talking about this is the kind of fast that you can do a number of things. You're gonna, you're gonna work on injustice, you're gonna work on people who are oppressed, you're gonna work on those who are wandering and hungry, you're gonna work on those who, who don't know what to do. And he said, Your light or your revelation will break forth like the dawn. You'll know what to do. Look at somebody say, I need to know what to do. I, I, need, I need to, to know I, what to do. I said, like I said, I need to know what to do about everything. I need God. to know what to do about everything. I need to know what to do about everything, not just a few things, about everything. Anybody that Sam Sam said, I need to know what to do about everything. I need to know what to do about everything. Say, I need a revelation on it all. On it all. I need a revelation on it all. I need a revelation on it all. So he says the fast will break forth light or revelation. I don't know what to do about everything. Yes, yes. Now that doesn't mean I know everything, but I'll know what to do about everything because he who knows everything will tell me what to do about everything. Everything. Yes, yes. Everything. Yes. I want you to get that. He, everything. My, my back is messed up. God will tell me what to do about that. Uh, I got friends that's messed up. God will tell me what to do about that. I, I'm tired of hurting. God will tell me what to do about that. See, about everything. I've got a business. God will tell me what to do about everything. See, when the light breaks forth, when revelation comes from God, then God will reveal to you personally. Personally. So, it's good to have prophets. It's good to have apostles. It's good to have all that. But I like the direct line. Anybody like the direct line? I want the direct line. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want the direct line. Lord, speak to me directly. What I'm telling you, God will speak to you directly. When you set yourself in position, set yourself up so that God will move. Do it intentionally. God, I, I ain't going to lie about it. Lord, I'm going to fast because I need to know about everything. Everything that changes fasting a little bit. Hey, I'm fast. Should I fast on 6 to 12? What did I say? What should I eat? Stop it! It is an operation that you do for you. 
So if you shortchange you, you shortchange you. But he says that when I do it right, the evidence that I did it right is that revelation begins to come. The dawning, it begins to come. So if I didn't do it right, do it again. Do it again. Don't beat yourself up. Don't roll on the floor. Don't run in front of a car and say, you know what? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get this thing right. Don't end your life. Don't run out there. All is all over. The Don't just stop predicting over your life. Stop predicting negative things over your life. Stop saying stuff you don't want. Say what you 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 want. Then it might not happen. Yes, it will. Yes, it absolutely will. Everything you have ever said happens. I don't know what I'm going to do. Then you don't know what you're going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. Then you don't know where you're going to go. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Then you don't know what's happening. So everything you have said comes to pass. So change the script. And use the word to do it with. Use the word. Your word says, Lord. Your word says, Lord. Try it. Your word says, Lord. Your word says, Lord. Your word says,
How many people need yes. more? How many need to get it down up in there until yes. start, you start spitting it out? Yes, yes. See, yes. when you eat too much of something, you start spitting it out. So you ought to have that word so choked up in you that you start spitting it out. When you began to walk, it's not, it's not, not disconnected from you. It's so tied to you that your words are tied in his words. And you began to speak his word. Then his word becomes a lamp unto your feet. And his word becomes a light unto your back. Because it's down up inside of you. And when something happens to you, begin, the word comes to you and starts saying, yeah, that's how, this is what I want you to do. That word comes and begins to do. He says you're going to break forth. He's going to break forth. He's going to break forth. Verse 8. And your healing will be quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. Righteousness is your standing. When your righteousness goes before you, it means doors open. Only reason why you can't get in is because they don't know who you are. But God knows who you are. So if you're believing God for a promotion, if you're believing God for a change, Get in line with God so that your righteousness, your name that God has put his hands upon will go before you and open up opportunities and break things that you've been trying to break all this time. He's here. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be afraid to say, Lord, I'm righteous because you made me righteous. Oh, God. That will be so mad. Keep saying, saying, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous, I'm righteous because Christ made me righteous. Say it right now. Say I'm righteous. Make me right. Shut I'm righteous. I'm righteous because Christ made me righteous. Because I'm No longer gonna deny my I'm stop denying Jesus paid the price. I don't care what's wrong with it. I need you to heal me, God. I'm righteous. Yeah. Restore me. I got work to do, places to go, people to be, things to accomplish. And I need to be yeah. in my right yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. I need to be my yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 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 I need to be able to arrive now. Yeah. I need to arrive. Nobody flies a plane that's on its on its way and never gets to its destination. Right. You cannot walk with God and not get to some destination. You cannot mm -hmm. walk with God and not get to some praise points. You cannot all walk right, with God all right. and not something great. You cannot walk. Glory. You'll be frustrated. But what I'm Glory. telling you is that if you have gotten fast and somebody is fast on your behalf, the light is breaking for you. Healing yeah. is coming quickly, yeah. quickly, quickly. Yeah. It's been yeah. a long time. Listen, it's coming quickly. Yeah. Shut up, yourself. Listen to him. It's going to be coming quickly. It's coming yes. quickly. Yes. Yes. Quickly. Yes. Quickly. Yes. Quickly. Quickly. Yes. Quickly. 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 That means his spirit is pushing you. Pushing you. Have you ever had God push you? Mm -hmm. 
Bernard Jordan prophesied to me in Houston years ago. I never paid much attention to it. Like, you know, I heard it. But he took something and he put it behind my back and he said, God's going to push you. Mm. You have a clue what that is. I want to put it behind your back. Oh, yes. God is going to push you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just you can't have a rear back. stop, David. Which means you can't have a rear guard if there's no space. Mm -hmm. See, you, you ain't no rear guard right up on top of somebody. The rear guard means there's some space. You're making some space. All right. And so God's going to push you and push you. Ooh, and my, push, my, my, my. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cry for help, and he will say, 
here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of fingers and malicious tongue. Nobody in here does malicious tongue. Nobody here points fingers. So this is probably something you can share with someone you know <laughs> that needs ministry. Because <laughs> I know anybody in here pointing no fingers and have malicious talk. You're not doing nothing like that. Well, I don't do that. See, what I do is I share pointing fingers and malicious talk. I just share. Then you make that. Then you all don't do that, but some people do. Like, if I've done anything wrong, which is the most dangerous question I've learned in 40 years, tell me what it is. That's a trap. Because when you tell them, that ain't you. <laughs> See, that's not so. Here's what he says now. I don't point the fingers. Well, this is talk. He says, verse 10, if you spend yourselves in the behalf of the hungry and satisfy the need of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness. Oh, goodness. Darkness. Darkness always deals with a couple of things, but it means ignorance too. It means blindness. When you do this, you stop being blind. How many know that we have, and when you drive, they have what they call a blind spot. It's a spot you can't see, but it's there. I mean, all God's children got blind spots. You can't see, but it's there. And so sometimes God begins to talk to us about a blind spot. And we say, the devil is a liar. Rebuke you, Satan. Rebuke you in the name of Jesus. God said, no, it is. It is. And sometimes in our travels, when we find that we are making the same trip we made the last time, then God is able to tell us, listen, I need to bring some light to your dark area, to your blind spot. I need to make some light to that. Now, and then he sends people to do it. Okay, well, Lord, we just don't talk. Just don't sit before your throne. See, one of the things about hearing from God is that God uses people. How many know God uses people? How many God? How many know God uses people that you don't know? How many know that God has somebody coming your way right now that you've never been, never seen before? And if you're open to God, walk with God, they're going to bring some revelation that's going to get rid of that darkness, that blind spot. And they might not do it very nicely because they might not be what you call saved. They may not be saved. How I many of the God speaks to unsaved people, gives them visions, gives them dreams, gives them all kinds of things? Bible verse, I think, when, they, when Abraham was trying to get over on his wife, I think it was Rebecca or something, and told him, tell him, you're my sister and all that. And God spoke to the king who was going to take the wife and gave him a dream and told him, if you touch her, you did. If you touch her, you did. So God can speak to whomever he wants to speak to. And so God can use anybody to come and speak to you. And sometimes when we're just in Christianese and just trying to get your attention, God has to use somebody else who don't have Christianese. And they come and when they say it, uh, it, it brings light. God will do that. God will do that for us. He loves us enough to do that. Amen. Those of you who have friends who don't tell them the truth, you're not their friend. You're not their friend. I don't want to offend them. You definitely are their friend. Friends offend and stay. Gossips talk and walk away. But friends offend. You'll know the level of your friendship on how you can handle your offenses, not your, your, your compliments. You'll know where y'all really stand. Let me continue. If you spend yourself, then your light will rise in darkness, and your night will become like noonday. Oh my goodness. The Bible says weeping shall be for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Verse 11, the Lord will guide you always. Ooh. He will satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. Your frame is your life. He will strengthen your life. Verse 12, your people will rebuild the ancient wounds and raise up the HHO foundations. You will be rebuilt, called repairs of the broken wall. Now, God is speaking to Israel, but I believe we can look over their shoulders. And hear God speak to us. Many families are torn up. And it needs to be rebuilt. Your fasting before God will open that opportunity for you to rebuild correctly. And there's another one, but I won't do that. Now, look at verse, look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. When, when, uh, 
We have to take our case before God's throne room. We have to take it. There's a throne of grace. Verse, uh, Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come boldly. Not like the lion and the wizard of Oz, the cowardly Christian, the cowardly saint. But let us come boldly. The first thing the enemy says, what, do you, what, the hell? what is your problem? You want to go up to God like that. Come boldly. What does it mean to be bold? It doesn't mean to be arrogant. It means to be confident. Let yeah, yeah. me come with confidence. Some of us, because life has hit us, has lost our confidence. Even in the world. There are people that I've met over my lifetime who misquoted God and thought God should move on their misquotation. Lord, you said nothing's going to happen to me. God ain't told you that lie. He never said that. Lord, you said, Lord, didn't say that at all. God is not going to move on my misquotation of what I thought he said. He's going to move on what he said. I need to have confidence. I need to go before God. And if necessary, write down what you want to tell him. So you don't get it mixed up. Your brain is not that great when, it's, when you get in the presence of God. You will lose who you are. So you got to have it written down. They say, oh, oh, see, if you've never really been in the presence of God, you would never know that. If you've been in the presence of the devil, you know you'll lose your mind too. You forget what's going on. That's what, that's what possession is. I don't know where I am, what, I, what am I doing on. I don't know what's going on. So when I get into the presence of God, when I get to the throne, he says, he says, I want you to come boldly. Come boldly. If I say boldly, boldly, boldly. boldly. Come with confidence. Come packing. Say, Lord, I'm ready for my assignment. I'm coming to your throne. That we may obtain mercy. Mercy comes from God. I come to get mercy. Raise your hands to God. Let's tell the Lord right now. Lord, I come to get some. I come to get mercy. I, get mercy. I come to get mercy. mercy. He says, I come to get mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Any need you have, put your hands up. Lord, I have some need, so I, I come to get mercy for it. What's why I need mercy? Because I may have messed it up. I may have overextended my credit. I may have bought things I need to buy. I need mercy to, so I can get some help for the things that I have needs. Lord, I said, God, have mercy. Lord, I need mercy. I, I cut somebody out yesterday. Lord, I need some mercy. Uh, I really meant it, but I still need some mercy right now. <laughs> I got revelation on the situation that was going on. 
I'm not afraid to stand up and know. I'm not afraid to proclaim. I command in the name of Jesus that every family problem that's going on is broken because of the spirit of the living God. I speak to every family legacy in the name of Jesus. I command it to prosper. I stop all finger pointing. I stop all malicious talking, oh God. Lord, we take it back. We repent of it, oh God. I was wrong. I said it right. I should have never done it. So, Father God, I come boldly right now because I need your help. I got relatives, I got friends, I got family Thank that are in Jesus. trouble. I'm the conduit to you, Lord. I'm the bridge they don't get across to. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, when we stop yes, being God. concerned about God. myself and realize yes, I am your representative. I am your kingdom citizen. And, Lord, I come before your throne. I need grace. I need to be empowered to do the impossible at your command, no matter what anybody else thinks. And, Father God, I release it in Jesus' name right here and right now. If you believe God, let's bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says something. He says, money answers mm -hmm. all things. So it's not answers. It's answer. Give me an answer. God is so awesome. He gave me one answer, and it causes a chain reaction on every problem. Thank you, God. He gave me one answer, and it begins to unlock everything that's behind you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He said, he gave me one answer. While I yet pray, he says, the answer. The rich man says, Lord, I think for the answer, not answer. Your advice is good. Your wisdom is great, but I need the answer. And Jesus is the answer to my situation and my situation. He is the answer. He's the answer. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. Is he not? Amen. He is. He's whatever I need. He is the answer. So, Lord, I thank you for the answer, the answer. I thank God for the answer. Oh, I thank God for the answer. I thank you for the answer. Thank you. Point, Neil. Thank you, God. Thank you. So I couldn't get healed until I got the answer. Thank you, God. I can get the answer. Not answers. What you think? Well, I think you need to. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And in the meantime, I'll do what I need to do to maintain, but I need the answer. I need God to break out the darkness. Light the shock. I got good news for you. The light is broken for you. There's a break in your case. And the Lord's about to take his God and say, in your favor. Thank you, God. Oh, I hate to say it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I was getting a back rub. No, uh, <laughs> for the listening audience, I was getting a back rub. That's what I meant when I said I hate to say it. Just in case anybody take it the wrong way. <laughs> 